Hu Tao is an amazing pyro polearm DPS. What's going on kings, queens, and majesties? And today, I got for you guys a comprehensive guide on Hu Tao. Timestamps will be available in the description down below. And with that out of the way, let's get started. To get started on having this amazing damage dealer do damage, you're gonna have to build her up first. First, you'll need Pyro Agates, which you can acquire from fighting the Pyro Regisvine. However, if you do have some leftover agates from any other boss, you can use that material to convert them into Pyro Agates at the respective alchemy benches. Silk Flowers, which can be found at these places on the map. Whopper Flower Nectar, which can be found from defeating Whopper Flowers. And the last thing you'll need are the Juvenile Jades, which you can obtain from fighting the Primo Daddy. Moving on to Hu Tao's talents, her normal attack performs up to 6 consecutive spear strikes. Her charge attack is a lunge forward that deals damage to all enemies in her path. And her plunge attack deals an area of effect damage upon impact. Moving on to Hu Tao's bread and butter, her elemental skill is called Guide to Afterlife, and this thing is what makes Hu Tao amazing. To break down what this skill does, when Hu Tao activates this skill, her HP is reduced by 30% of her current HP total, and it puts Hu Tao into the Paramita Papilio state, aka the PP state. <laughs> it gets me every time, man. <laughs> anyway, the PP state gives Hu Tao a lot of benefits at the cost of her losing that 30% HP. Breaking down what the PP state gives to Hu Tao, it increases Hu Tao's attack based on her max HP at the time of entering the PP state. However, this does have a limit of not being able to exceed 400% of Hu Tao's base attack. It also converts all attacks into pyro damage which cannot be overwritten by other elemental infusions. For example, you would not be able to use Chong's elemental skill to turn her attacks into cryo. They will remain pyro no matter what. Next, all charge attacks apply the blood blossom effect on a hit. The Blood Blossom effect we'll discuss a little bit further in detail in just a moment. The last benefit of the PP state is it increases Hu Tao's resistance to being interrupted. And just something to note here, the PP state does end when its duration is over or when Hu Tao has fallen or has left the field. Now to discuss the Blood Blossom effect. When an enemy is affected by Blood Blossom, they take Pyro damage every 4 seconds and the damage is considered Elemental Skill damage. This means it can proc Elemental Reactions. Its total duration is 8 seconds and it can only be refreshed by Hu Tao herself. This effect is really cool and it allows for Hu Tao to do a lot of damage while not even being on the field. Moving on, let's talk about Hu Tao's Elemental Burst, Spirit Soother. While not her primary source of damage, it is still very important to her kit. So let's talk about the details. After using Spirit Soother, Hu Tao will command a Blazing Spirit to do a large Pyro AoE. When an enemy is hit by this AoE, Hu Tao recovers a percentage based on her max HP. This effect however can only work with up to 5 enemies. You can still hit more than 5, however you can only receive the HP recovery up to a max of 5 hits. Now while all this is already cool, there is an added benefit that we haven't talked about yet. That being, when Hu Tao's HP is below or equal to 50%, the damage and HP regeneration is increased. This is very good for her damage, which we will talk more about in a moment. For now, we're going to move on and talk about Hu Tao's passives. First off, we have Flutter By. When Hu Tao's PP state ends, all allies in the party will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. And I think this is a really good effect and can cause her to have a lot of good team synergy. Her next passive is called Sanguine Rouge. And what it does is, when Hu Tao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her Pyro damage bonus is increased by 33%. This is amazing, especially when you consider that her burst also gives you an increase in damage when she's below 50% HP, but this also works amazing in terms of scaling her damage while she's in the PP state. Moving on to her last passive, it's called the more the merrier. The way it activates is, when Hu Tao cooks a dish perfectly, she has an 18% chance to receive an additional suspicious dish of that type. Rounding out the talent portion of this guide, when it comes to Hu Tao talent priority, I do recommend starting by leveling up Guide to Afterlife first, then focusing on her normal attack, and then her burst. Of course, this does come after you evenly get everything up to level 6. Moving on, let's talk about Hu Tao's constellations. For her constellation 1, it's called Crimson Bouquet. While Hu Tao is in her PP state, her charge attacks do not consume stamina. This constellation is amazing for Hu Tao. This enables her to consistently use her charge attack and consistently apply Blood Blossom. 
It's also very vital in terms of getting Hu Tao to do the most damage possible. What I mean when I talk about this is that something that's very important for Hu Tao to do to get out the most damage optimally is dash canceling or jump canceling. And the most optimal way to do that is of course by having stamina consumption reduced which means you'll be able to dash cancel more often than not. So when it comes to this constellation, I 100% think it's worth pursuing if you like Hu Tao even a little bit and you intend to use her more than average. This constellation directly affects and improves her gameplay and survivability by allowing her to retain stamina. So all in all, I genuinely think it's worth pursuing if you love Hu Tao and are wailing out for her. Moving on to her next constellation, Ominous Rainfall. It increases the Blood Blossom damage by an amount equal to 10% of Hu Tao's max HP at the time the effect is applied. This also allows for Hu Tao's Burst, Spirit Soother, to apply Blood Blossom as well. I think this constellation is pretty good. The added damage from Blood Blossom is great for Team Synergy. As I stated earlier, because the damage that comes from Blood Blossom is considered elemental skill damage, it does have the chance to proc elemental reactions, and the fact that you're getting more damage off of your Blood Blossoms means that your elemental reactions will be a lot stronger as well. Also, the added benefit of Spirit Soother applying Blood Blossom is also really good, considering that before you leave the field with Hu Tao, you should be using her burst anyway. I think like the previous constellation, this is worth pursuing if you like Hu Tao. However, it's not as pressing. It is a nice added bonus to Hu Tao, but it's not as impactful as constellation one for her gameplay. Moving on, we have her constellation three, Lingering Carmine. It increases the level of Guide to Afterlife by three. This constellation is honestly the stopping point if you like Hu Tao and you're willing out for her to be your new main. Considering this constellation directly improves Hu Tao's bread and butter Guide to Afterlife, it's arguably the best stopping point if you're main DPSing with Hu Tao and you like her a lot. Moving on to her constellation four, Garden of Eternal Rest. Upon defeating an enemy affected by a blood blossom that Hu Tao applied herself, nearby allies and party members, excluding Hu Tao, will receive a 12% increase to their crit rate for 15 seconds. This constellation is honestly pretty good in terms of improving Hu Tao's capability as a sub DPS. And while it is good for team comps, I can't say that this constellation is worth reaching for. Moving on to her constellation five, Floral Incense. Floral Incense increases the level of Spirit Soother by three. Improvements to talents are always great. However, this is not necessary and I don't think it's worth going after as Hu Tao's main source of damage comes from her Guide to Afterlife, which you would have already taken care of if you have her at Constellation 3. Moving on to Hu Tao's Constellation 6, Butterfly's Embrace. This effect triggers once Hu Tao's HP drops below 25% or she suffers a lethal strike. Hu Tao will survive the damage and for the next 10 seconds, all of her elemental and physical resistance is increased by 200% and her crit rate is also improved by 100% as well as greatly improving her resistance to being interrupted. This effect triggers automatically when Hu Tao has 1 HP left and can only occur once every 60 seconds. While yes, this is Constellation 6 and this does seem to be a game changer for Hu Tao, I don't think it's that great. I definitely think it's overrated. If if you're dropping below 25% HP, you're honestly not playing the Hu Tao game right as is. Not only that, but you can only trigger this effect once every 60 seconds, which is not really going to be that often. So honestly, I don't think it's worth it, but to each their own. If you do like Hu Tao and you want to change up her gameplay, go for it. And with that out of the way, we can move on to the weapons. Hu Tao's free to play options are actually really good and she does a lot of damage even though these weapons aren't even that high up in scale. For the first one it's going to be the black tassel and for the second one it's going to be the white tassel. And for the free to play 4 star option the prototype star glitter is the way to go. Moving on to the gacha 4 star weapons, the deathmatch and the black cliff pole are the best options for her. However, other acceptable weapons include the dragon's bane and the lithic spear. And to round this all off, the gacha 5 star weapons, in order of ranking, the first one that you're going to want to get is definitely Staff of Homa. This staff is catered to Hu Tao. Its passive is amazing for her and it's honestly the best weapon for her, of course. Next up is Primordial Jade Wing Spear. It's pretty good and an acceptable second. Next up, the Vortex Vanquisher would get the third place spot here. And the last one would go to the Skyward Spine. Moving on, let's talk artifacts. 
So the Crimson Witch of Flame set, in my opinion, is the ideal set for Hu Tao, whether it's just two piece or four piece. It's still really good. Elemental reactions are an important part of the game. Pyro gets the most damage out of elemental reactions. So when you're doing things like melt and vaporize, if you aren't aiming for reactions with pyros, you're missing out on optimal damage. And it's because of that that I think this is the optimal set to be running on Hu Tao. Now just because I believe that's the ideal set for Hu Tao doesn't mean it's the only one available when you are building her. The next set I'm going to talk about is the Nublis Oblige. This I think is the second best artifact set to run on Hu Tao if you want to run her as a sub DPS. It allows for Hu Tao's burst to do a lot more damage, but something to keep in mind is I don't recommend running a full 4 piece set. I do recommend instead running the 2 piece Witch and 2 piece Nublis, but if you are using her primarily for just her burst, then I would say maybe a 4 piece set is good, but not ideal. Like I said earlier, Hu Tao's bread and butter is her elemental skill, Guide to Afterlife. So focusing on her burst isn't exactly what you're going to want to use her for. Next artifact pieces I'm going to talk about are the Retracing Bolide. This set is good to run if you have a decent shield character. However, you should only be running this if you have a really good 4 piece set. With a shield, Hu Tao, who is optimally played under 50% HP, would be a lot safer from harm and would receive an increase to her damage with these artifacts. So that's pretty good, but only if you have a decent team to support the playstyle. The next and last artifact set piece I'm going to talk about is the Lava Walker set. You should only really consider running this if you have a good 4 piece set or if you just like to burn everything. The pyro bonus is very nice and it allows for the primary focus of Hu Tao to just be applying pyro and not causing elemental reactions. It's a lot more easy of a playstyle for new players so if you're new to the game and just trying to understand how to play with Hu Tao and you got some lava walker pieces, maybe use this artifact set as kind of uh, some training wheels. <laughs> Alright, so you know which artifact sets to be grinding for, but what stats should you be going after? For the main stats, when it comes to your sands, you're going to want to focus on HP percentage. If you don't have HP percentage, maybe take a nice attack percentage, but only leave that temporarily. Next up for your goblet, you're going to want to focus on pyro bonus damage, and if you can't do pyro bonus damage, HP is also a valid option. If not HP, maybe go for some attack percentage. Next up, we have the circlet, which you should try to get crit rate or crit damage. The circlet piece here I'm recommending would depend on the weapon that you're using. So if your weapon is giving crit rate, use a crit damage circlet. But if you're using a crit damage weapon, maybe get some crit rate for your circlet. Moving on to the substats, you're going to want to focus primarily on getting crit rate and crit damage. Then after that, you're going to want to get HP percentage and then afterwards energy recharge. If you end up not getting energy recharge, not a good replacement, but something that's okay to have on the artifact is elemental mastery. All right, so with all this, you should have your Hu Tao pretty kitted out and ready to go. But now you need to build a team for her. So to break this down, I kind of broke it up in parts. I'm going to talk about the team that I prefer to run on Hu Tao. Personally, I like a vaporized team. I'm a fan of this team because of the way Xing Shou's ult works. Because you're using charge attacks primarily with Hu Tao, you will constantly be able to apply the wet status onto an enemy, which means you'll be causing the vaporized elemental reaction constantly. This is way better than what melt teams can do for you, as there currently is no cryo unit that can apply cryo as fast as Xing Shou can apply wet. This means that some of your charge attacks with Hu Tao would not be causing the elemental reaction of Melt, whereas you can always guarantee yourself to be doing Vaporize. And with that information in your head, let's talk about the composition. So for my Vaporize team personally, I like to use Xing Shou, Diona, and then Sheng Ling. If you don't have Diona, a good replacement could be Chi Chi. And if you don't have Xing Shou, a good replacement for him could be Child. Next up, we have an Overload team that you could potentially be running. If you're using the WandaVision set, I mean Scarlet Witch set, I mean Crimson Witch set, for an Overload team comp, you're gonna want Zhongli, Fischl, and Bennett. While I know not everybody has 5 stars, if you don't have Zhongli, a good replacement could be Shen Yang. If you're trying to run a Melt team, you could be using Keia, Diona, and Shen Yan. If you don't like using Keia and you got the queen like I do, you can just replace Keia with Ganyu. But I'm not a rapper. Moving on, if you are using the Retracing Bolai team like I recommended earlier, a good team comp, while a little pricey, is Zhongli, Albedo, and Bennett. And if you don't have Albedo, a good replacement could be Noel. If you don't have Zhongli, a good replacement could be Xinyan. 
but I do feel like the retracing Bolai team really does amazing when it has the Geo Resonance. So I don't recommend using Xinyang if you do want to maintain that bonus. Maybe just put in another Geo character like Ningguang. Moving on, if you are using Nublis like I recommended earlier, you can use Mona, Xingxiu, and Diona. If you don't have Mona, I do recommend using Barbara, but if you already have Barbara on your team, there's going to be no need for Diona. So if that's the case, I recommend swapping Diona out with Keia. Next up, if you are using Lava Walkers like I recommended earlier, a great team for that is Shangling, Xinyan, and Diona. However, if you don't have Diona, a good supplement is Bennett. And with that, we're done with the team comps. Now I bet you're thinking you're ready to get out there with your Hu Tao. You're ready to destroy every single creature. You're ready to DPS floor 12 of Spiral Abyss. Let me tell you, no, you're not. <laughs> I got a few tips and tricks here for you guys. Pay attention. First, we got jump canceling. It's a little hard to get frame perfect. However, if you can master this, you're gonna be doing optimal damage with Hu Tao. Basically what you're going to want to do is charge attack right as you see the spear plunge forward and you get the numbers you're going to want to jump immediately. Like I said it's hard to master but once you get it going you're going to get that muscle memory down. Next up we're going to get the dash cancel. This consumes a lot of stamina and it's not the best option unless you have Hu Tao at constellation 1. If you do have her as C1, this tech is the one you should be doing. With C1, you can successfully land up to 10 charge attacks before her PP state runs out. That's amazing damage. In order to do her dash cancel, the timing is pretty similar to the jump cancel. However, you're going to be canceling the animation for the charge attack with a dash instead of a jump. These may look a little advanced, but I promise once you get them down, they will be very easy. Next up, we got the normal attack cancel. After you do your charge attack, you immediately do a normal attack so you can string together another charge attack. While it's not optimal, it's an easier option to get out a higher amount of damage. So if you're struggling to learn the jump cancel and you're struggling to learn the dash cancel, the normal attack cancel is probably your best bet in getting optimal damage. Whew, and that's it kings, queens, and majesties. That's, that's the guide. This was a longer video, but I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys liked the video, make sure you leave a like. If you like me, Make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring that bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video or go live on YouTube. And lastly, check out my Twitter to follow me to stay up to date on all the Genshin news. Later.